Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to another FIFA 22 video where today we're going to be checking out what is probably my favorite formation in the game this year. It is the 5-2-1-2. Now I've been getting back into FIFA and you see I've bought a, a new team, invested a little bit of money and bought, bought some players that I just wanted to play with. Kind of a Serie A theme, you know, a bit of some Spanish players in there. Wanted to obviously get back into playing again, just to kind of uh, get familiar with playing consistently with foot champs coming up, obviously. Foot champs is going to be generally very, very sweaty. So I just want to kind of sharpen up my game again and get familiar with playing. So I've gone back to my 5 2 1 2, just kind of really getting my feet back under the table. And I had a lot of fun uh, with the, with this formation. You know, it's still a superb formation. You know, there's still a lot of positives to this formation. Maybe not quite like I remember it. And, and the way I play with it is not quite as I remember it, but it is still a fantastic formation. And we will have a video coming up very, very soon listing some of the top three formations that you should be using going into team of the season. But as you can tell, this 5-2-1-2 is definitely going to be one of my three. That is absolutely for certain. Now, without further ado, going into the tactics for this formation. Now, I've had probably, I don't know, five, six, seven hundred games worth of experience with this formation. So this formation, more than any other, I know it inside and out. And in this formation, you cannot play on a press it is not possible uh it's just it's just it just can't it doesn't work because of the, the the starting positions of your players just the way it normally is the fact that generally your midfield and your strikers are quite narrow the only width comes from the wing backs so anyone that you're going to play a press against all you have to do is just chip it out to the left or the right back because they don't get marked by anybody so you can't play a press in this formation so in that regard it is a win because it means that you're generally going to have a very good position and you are going to just naturally be hard to break down and without being defensive you know you can see the way that we're you know we're going to show you how we set this formation up but it is not set up defensively but because we're not playing on a press it does mean that our opponent is probably going to have maybe a little bit more easy time in possession especially if they're a good quality player but it does mean that you are going to be harder to break down so there is kind of a positive and a negative to that in terms of the defensive width, I've gone for 45. I would probably say, if anything, maybe anywhere between 40 and 50 is a good number. Generally, I would say it's better to be narrower on the defensive width, especially in a five-back formation because you've already, you already cover quite a lot of the pitch. So making sure that you are tight through the middle of the pitch and that it forces your opponent to have to go out wide in order to potentially uh, create chances, I would definitely say is a much better way and it works super well in this formation. In terms of the depth, I've gone for 60. Now, the reason why I've gone a little bit higher on the depth for around about 60, because we're not playing on the press, naturally playing on a heavier, a higher depth is much better anyway when you are playing on a press. But, you know, I don't want to play on anything too narrow. You play on something like 50, This that that's when this formation becomes quite defensive. So anywhere between about 60, 62, 65, something around that number is a very, very good number to play on because you need to get a little bit higher at the pitch so that you have offensive capabilities. You need to, to have that balance without being too deep. In terms of the build-up play, there's a couple of ways you can play the build-up play. I find that this is the best combination that works well. I tried a few things. I tried fast build-up with possession, and that was very, pretty effective. Um, I also tried just having long ball and balanced and see how that worked, and that wasn't the best. It didn't quite work too well. But the combination that worked very, very well for me was slow build-up and direct passing. This worked super, super well. The slow build-up the slow build up allowed me to control the game, and that's how I like to play. I like to control possession and have more of the ball and control the game. So the slow build-up works really, really well for me. And as it says, it strengthens the short passing game. So it really benefits you playing sort of 5, 10-yard passes, not sort of big 20, 30-yard through balls over the top. If that's your style of play, long ball would be much better in this position you're someone who likes to dominate the ball more, slow build it will work very, very well. And the reason why I pair it with direct passing is just so when we get in that final third, we have lots of players making runs in behind. And the way that we have it set up in the instructions really, you know, kind of adds to that as well. So you do need to have direct passing on, just helps you, just helps you and helps you kind of change the pace. When you get into the final third, you need to play faster. You need to really speed up the way you play. So playing direct passing is a must. In terms of the offensive width, I like to play on 100. The reason why I like to play on 100, it does mean that your midfield gets opened up a little bit more, but because we have the back five, it shouldn't matter too much because you should still be very, very hard to break down, especially with the defensive style obviously being a little bit higher. But the offensive width being on 100 is mainly because I want the wing backs to get forward and be wing backs. They get forwards, they attack, they really support the, the, the guys up front because they are your width. 
And also having them on 100 means that your, your midfield is going to be open, but you're going to be pulling your opponent's midfield apart as well because they're going to have to get out wide to be able to come and get the ball off you. And that's when then the direct passing really works because you've now pulled his players out wide to come and press you. So it's left space in the midfield. And that's when your midfielders need to really be able to get on the ball and fire those passes through to your strikers. So it's really important. And this combination really works super well. And it's one of the reasons why this formation is so effective with these custom tactics. In terms of the instructions, we've got Vlahovic and Qualiorella, both of these guys on stay central and getting behind. Stay central because the wing backs are getting forwards. So we don't need to have them on balance width. We certainly don't need them on drift wide. I just want these guys to stay really between the 18 yard per, you know, the, the 18 yard box in between the goalposts, just for those cutbacks, also to be able to make their runs in between sort of centre back slash full back areas, not too wide. So I do need to need them staying in the middle of the pitch. The central cam, obviously, in this case, it's Insigne. He wants to be on get in the box and free roam. His position mainly is going to end up being sort of around edge of the box. So, so this player really wants to be someone who is very good at finesse shots. Uh, they're going to be obviously hitting a lot of finesse shots from the top of the box, various angles. So this guy wants to have good shooting. And generally, if you, you can, this guy would be better as well if you have someone in with a five-star weak foot in this position because they're going to be doing a lot of shooting but also a lot of passing. So they're going to have to be very, very competent on passing with both feet. So if you can get someone with a five-star weak foot, good passing and good long shots and good finesse shots, that will be someone who is absolutely perfect for this position. In terms of the two midfielders, we've got Milinkovic, Savic and Koke. I'm actually going to have McKenney in this position, but he's in my own assigned part at the moment, so I can't get him out, unfortunately. But I'm going to have McKenney and Koke, and they're the kind of perfect midfielders, two box-to-box -box midfielders. That is what you need. You don't need cams. You don't need DMs. You need box-to-box -box mids because these guys will get forwards, and they get into goal-scoring positions. So you do want someone who you at least feel semi-comfortable with, with potentially taking shots. Obviously, you need someone who is comfortable with making, obviously, lots of short passes, but can play a few through balls through as well. But you need to have someone that's generally got a little bit of pace because they are going to be having to track back, especially for counterattacks, because that midfield's quite open. You need guys that can get back uh, quickly for counterattacks. So it's really important that they've got good uh, good pace in there as well and good agility. So Milinkovic Savage maybe isn't the best, but someone like McKenney in there is perfect. So if you can get someone like that McKenney type player in there, a Kante, someone like that in there is really, really good. And then last but not least, obviously the, the three centre backs, of course, are going to be all on stay back while attacking. And the wing backs in this in this instance, I've actually got Ayazabal and Poro. And Ayazabal actually does, even though he's got terrible defending, really suits this role quite well because most of the time I have lots of the ball and I am attacking. So if you're someone that likes to dominate possession, you can have players like a Yarsbao. You can get away with it, really, because generally he doesn't have to do too much defending when I'm playing, unless I'm playing someone who is just better than me. But you generally need, obviously, more attacking sort of fullbacks. You don't want defensive fullbacks. You do need guys that are great attacking fullbacks. So someone like Hakimi is superb for this formation because he's obviously got great attributes to attack. That team of the Hakimi is perfect, super quick, great passing, great dribbling on the ball. And generally, they get in positions where they can cross. And with players like Vlahovic in the team, it just adds another string to the bow because I can get forward with Poro. I can whip across in knowing that Vlahovic is going to be winning headers. But he's also got that finesse where I can smash crosses and he's just going to be in the right position. Someone like Qualiarella is going to be in the right position for tap-ins as well. So it's having that balance as well with your two strikers. You don't want two strikers, really, I find, that are the same. You don't want just two speedsters because you don't want to have that balance where sometimes you're going to be in positions where you can cross the ball in, you want to win a header, but you can also be in positions where you can smash crosses or look for cutbacks to Insigne. And this is how it all knits together really, really well to make this formation so good. So this is a brilliant formation. I really love this formation and it is definitely my favorite formation this year in the game. So we're going to be doing a lot more formation videos when it comes towards team of the season. If there are any other videos you want me to let, let me know down in the comment section down below. Make sure you drop a thumbs up and subscribe as well if you are new to the channel. But that is all today, guys. Have an awesome day. I'm out.